Hey guys, so we have a new patient here on the workbench and this is a carburetor for the 81 Corvette. As you can see it's a 1708 1217 which means that um, the 170 is an identifier. The number 8 indicates it's a quadrajet from the 1980s. The first number 1 tells us that it's for a 1981. The number 2 means it's a 4 barrel. The second number one is indicates that it's for a Chevrolet. And the number seven means it's been calibrated for a manual transmission vehicle. And even though I said new, new patient, I am not going to be rebuilding this unit. Instead, I'm going to have the guys at All American Carburetor up in Orange Park, Florida, do the, uh, the work for me. They rebuild the carburetor for my 76 Corvette years ago and they did an amazing job so I trust that they will do the same for this 1708. And I think the uh, 81 deserves to have the original carburetor installed. The previous owner bought a replacement unit which even though it's a quadrajet it's, it's not running right. So we're gonna have this one in back to new condition in a few weeks and this is the one that I'm going to be using for the car. So tomorrow I'm going to drive up to uh, Orange Park, which is next door to Jacksonville. And uh, we'll let the guys handle this uh, rebuild for me. You know when you drop it off, you're handed a piece of paper, yep. name, address, phone number, all the goodies, what it fits. I'm just curious what the chef wears on. See it? See all the wear in it? Yeah, oh yeah. It's just, oh, yeah, a lot. There's a, there's a lot of, a lot yeah. of wear. And you can, a lot of times you can even, not until you take it apart. A lot of times, the term I use is eyebrow. Because what happens is shaft is not moving up and down, it's moving side to side, right? So you're dealing with a thicker piece of aluminum with a thinner aluminum blade, and it ends up making almost like a cast, where you, it, it will never seal because but all the ends, oh, you can't tell it on this one yet, but. You'll, if you look at it in the light, in the corner where the shaft is, it has a big gap all the way around. And so then it won't idle down to where it's 750 or it idles at a thousand or something like that. And if we have to do that, we can replace flaps. That's not a big issue. I'm just curious about the secondaries. This one ain't that bad, a little. Yeah, they usually stay pretty well, the, good for. These, at the end of the day, these are the new quarter jets. Right. The last ones. The, you know, early 80s to the, you know, the end of the 80s. Um, and it's just disassembled, you know. Now one question, and I know a lot of people have the same, the same question is, you know, the, the, the well plugs, you know, do they really solve that problem in 70? No, they're still. At the end of the day, you, you it's, it's still, a freeze plug, okay. if you think about it. Yeah. So after it's gone through the process and we get ready to build it, they're typically tapped down. We re-sand it and we put an epoxy on it, whether it's JB Quick or something like that. Right. And it's good for so many years. The biggest challenge with that is as the carburetor gets hot and cold, the JB weld is hard. So it will not flex with it. And after X amount of time, either start seeping again or actually pop off. Typically, they just start seeping. Yeah. The, the biggest fallacy most people think is it's... Because you guys know that there's going to be two big wells plugged right here, right? Correct. Then you have these little ones. The reason it usually drains down is because of these, the ones in the front. That's all part of the primary uh, jets. So, or if you see you're having a problem, to, you know, have the carburetor filled up with gas, get you some bucket, yeah. put it on your shelf. Yeah. If you see it dripping, yeah. it's definitely leaking. Yeah. It's, you know, it's... I use the term, it's not rocket science. It really is not. It's okay, well, you can get, you can get all technical and this and that. You know, there's some other issues with, like if you have your Corvette, you don't drive it all the time. It sits in your garage for two weeks and you, I hear it all the time from my customers. I got a saw on it to get it to, to, to prime and go. Sometimes it's not the Welsh plugs. Sometimes it's the fuel draining back yes. because the carburetor is the high point, right? And there's two types of filters you buy for GM carburetors. There's one with an anti-drain back valve, right, and one like the old school one that you can look right through. So, with this being a high point, and most needle, the most needle seats have these windows around them. Okay, I was gonna. And yeah. it, 
over time, because the fuel pump doesn't hold pressure, it just kind of just slowly goes back. So now you're nee, 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 yeah. and then, it, then I hear it runs great as long as I'm driving it. I said, okay, yeah. either you drive it every now and then, or you're going to have this problem. You know, unless you get the they used to make multiple needle seats over time and decades. A lot of them only make them with the windows. If you're lucky enough to find them in an old kit that solid. doesn't have it, that yeah. are solid on That's what I install in mine because of that. I, I and you won't have that problem. Yep. Mm -hmm. yep. Little things different. like that. You know, it's... So when uh, someone like myself bring your carburetor, what are the steps? And, uh, and give me a time frame to, you know. Right to... now for us, honestly, this is our slow time of the year during the summer because most people have their cars throughout the United States. It's hot. No, we won't work on their car unless. Yeah. So we hit, we're busier during the winter. Okay. It's typically at least four to six weeks minimum. Okay. But in the in the peak, it could be three or four months. It just depends on what's going on, who's going on, and everything else. So from here it goes. It's disassembly. Disassembly. Mm -hmm. And then you give Cleaning, it a good bath. Cleaning goes through an ultrasonic. Okay. Meaty blasted. Going through the plating process, then through the build process. Okay. Then the testing process. And then we call you. That's awesome. That was pretty rough, isn't it? Yeah, these have a, a they're pinged on the back, but since it's flapping open because of how this is bent right here, yeah. we're gonna have to heat this metal up and get a jig that we have and attach it to the carburetor here. Huh? And we're gonna add um, a lot of heat there and we're gonna actually try to push that metal back out to where it should be. Wow. Um, some shops would just grind down the plate to make it fit. So that's one of the things that we do that's different from other places. So we're gonna actually make the repair to the body of this carburetor. Um, this tube we can repair as well. Um, so we can do all of that and if and if there's pieces like this that maybe we can't find a, a, a repair for or the repair is not successful, we'll replace that. This is this is all stuff that's going to get fixed uh, with, with just a, a few little processes that we start with. So that may look really bad now, um, but all these little pieces we're going to take these apart um, and 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 clean them all with specific processes. Brass and, and everything will get treated differently. Um, these little springs we take care not to lose that little stuff like this um, plastic and and all of that will get treated separately as well um, and then even though the inside of the carburetor looks like that it'll still look brand new when we get finished with it yep. we'll keep tearing it down um, all the way th through the base uh, I'll take a Dremel and get these guys yeah. out. These are all yeah. how they've been hit with something here, yeah. stamped in, yeah. so swedged. Um, so I'll, I'll knock that swedge off with the Dremel and then uh, pull both shafts out. They'll both be bushinged. But on the one that you you have there, you have a TPS that actually um, slides into the carburetor in this area here, and it's got a little sensor with an actuator here as well that's got a spring underneath it. And then it also has a solenoid on the top that um, that helps the the actuation on the carburetor carburetor as well. Um, and that's with mostly the older carburetors, 1986 um, and and forward on the Rochester's. They're uh, they're computerized um, for the OBD OBD one. And this is the finished product. It's been about three weeks since I dropped it off at All American up in Jacksonville. And what can I say? I mean, look at this thing. It's literally better than new. All new parts, all the electronics are brand, brand new. New uh, filter. Look at the, um, the workmanship. 
I mean, this is supposed to be black. It is black. They installed the right um, vacuum hose here with white stripe. I mean, these guys know the, their business. And just by the way, they uh, work on all, all brands of carburetors. They had some there that I've never heard of. So they know the, the business of rebuilding, remanufacturing really carburetors. And as you can see, everything has been flattened. So there are no vacuum leaks of any, any kind. New bushings, new everything. I mean, look at the uh, finish of these springs. Everything is just beautiful and perfect. Plating, everything is just amazing. And just so we're clear, this is not a sponsored uh, video. I did not get a discount. I paid what you would pay to have your carburetor rebuilt by them. And that is the way that I like it really. So there, there is no conflict of interest here. I am not ready to install this carburetor back in the car yet because I'm still doing a lot of uh, repairs, cleaning and stuff like that. So uh, that is gonna be uh, coming up in a, in a separate video. Let me uh, remove the air cleaner and show you the carburetor that the previous owner had installed. So as you can see, it's a new carburetor, but it is not tuned up properly. So there's a lot of issues. You can see here some kind of remand label which is fine but again parts do not look like the uh, the ones on the original piece which like i mentioned at the beginning of the video the car i think deserves to have the right carburetor installed And like with everything else nowadays, it is an expense to have things rebuilt. But let me tell you, the um, having the right parts redone to this level, it is it is just amazing. And I'm glad that there there's a company like All American that does this type of work. This uh, this is an art form, I believe. And I I've rebuilt many quadrajets. Uh, actually, I have one that I'm still slowly rebuilding. So I know what it takes to rebuild a carburetor by the rebuild kit, but there's nothing like replating and stuff like that that I can do. I mean, these guys are just masters at what they do. And this is the stand that my friend Mark made for me. I provided a, a video to the uh, to the machine work he had to do to, to make this thing. This is just solid. So, again, I am very, very happy with the uh, with the end result and i think you would too if uh, if you had your carburetor done by by these guys and uh, so give them a call if you if you need yours redone and uh, they kind of do a, a basic tune-up they're all tested on a on an engine on an actual v8 so they they give it a basic tune-up in most cases all you have to do is adjust the uh, curb idle and that that's it um, so anyway, I will have an update once it's reinstalled in the, uh, in the car. I'm still working on this uh, 81, as you probably know, and uh, I'm making some progress.